welcome to our review of the Sony Ericsson I know. Um, actually, it just looks like a little black bar, but it isn't. It is a fully functional phone. So let's have a look at the outside first. Um, what do you see here? It looks like a, a touchscreen multimedia player and not very much like a phone. Although nowadays most phones uh, look pretty much like this. So there's a big demand for touchscreen phones. This phone actually, you can either take as a compromise between a regular phone or a touchscreen phone or, as I'd like to put it, a uh, very interesting hybrid between the both of them because uh, many people are not that happy about touchscreen input actually when it comes to longer messaging, but more about that later. Um, so what you see here is pretty much, uh, it has the very same connectors like many Sony Ericsson phones. It's got the standard Sony Ericsson plug on the outside. Here we got a manual key lock on top, which is very nice. Um, we do have a uh, 8 megapixel camera built in with a LED flash. Um, actually quite a good resolution, probably the same camera like in the uh, uh, C905, but it's uh, not yet reported. Um, here again the multifunctional buttons uh, to increase decrease the volume or to zoom in or out when it comes to internet usage. And we do have the uh, obvious camera button. If you got a good camera you need to have a button to push it. Here we got the loudspeakers on the bottom of the phone. Um, actually this is not it um, because this phone contains a lot more and I gotta zoom out a bit to show you the full phone. So what I'm calling a uh, hybrid is, uh, in this case, the phone also has a fully functional keypad on the, uh, uh, on the bottom once you open the slider. Um, it's got like the regular navigation key like all Sony Ericsson phones have, um, plus the um, one to uh, square keypad. So looks obviously very sleek. Uh, you may be wondering why Sony Ericsson chose to do so, but you will uh, probably get to know that when we're finished with the review. So, um, how's the body work? Um, actually, pretty good, again. Um, Sony Ericsson uh, is, to many people, known as a, com uh, as, as a company that ships you good quality. And uh, yeah, as far as I can see, the uh, materials they used are quite good, actually. Um, they don't only look good, they look like they're built to last. Uh, the screen is pretty big, actually it's got a very strange resolution. It's got a resolution of 132 times 240 pixels, um, which doesn't make, uh, make it a standard. Um, it's got 16 million colors, which you're definitely going to see when we test it. And it's uh, kind of heavy, uh, about 134 grams as they say. We measured this one, it's about 140. Um, and uh, probably that's not only due to the uh, heavy SIM card we put in. Um, so um, yeah, not a very light phone, but a multifunctional phone. So, um, so much about the outside. Another subject is, of course, navigation, GPS, and anything that's combined with it. So the location services that we have right here. So what do we have? Of course we have Google Maps. That's obviously on any modern phone that you might ask for. Um, but it's it's actually pretty, pretty helpful to, uh, to have Google Maps on a phone. As you can see, the GPS automatically switches on and it switches off once it's no longer used. Um, it just tried to find my location on the map and um, let me uh, actually move in a little more um, and yeah you know of course Google Maps is the application that's uh, pretty handy to uh, actually look where you are, where you want to go to um, you may also, new with this phone um, join Google Attitude so you can see where your friends are which is also pretty neat. You may show some traffic and you may switch to the map view so you can definitely see where you actually are. And it's uh, pretty close. Actually we are here, this is where they located me but that's only uh, because uh, the GPS doesn't find a signal. We're indoors so what the heck could we do? 
Okay, so anyone who knows Google Maps knows this works and it works pretty well. Actually, due to HSDPA, it works pretty quick. But what's new is true navigation. You might not have expected that, but yes, this phone has true navigation. That's, by the way, the only reason I made up a new topic. So they installed WisePilot, which is an A GPS application. So it uh, makes you um, uh, it loads the maps actually from the internet, but uh, it does so pretty quick. And the big advantage of A GPS, of course, is that uh, you always got actual maps. I mean, consider how much work, how much road work is being done, and so um, having the latest maps on the phone is definitely a good idea. So let's see. Um, let's find a uh, location near me. Uh, let's say near me, and I search for a hotel. I wouldn't need one because I live around the corner. But um, yeah, just let's say you are somewhere where you're not at home, so you don't really know the surrounding. Well, actually, no, it found GPS, as you can see. We got full GPS reception, and it tells me well, there's some quite some hotels around here. Um, which is a good tourist hotel. Well, why not go for the tourist hotel? And now it gives me the option walk there, drive there, give me some details. I want to know what kind of place it is. And there we go. Pretty quick. We got whole uh, basic information, the location. We got the latitude actually. We got a phone number that I could call and go for it again. Um, I can see it on the map. It's uh, loading the map in the background. Oh, there it is. Not very many houses around there. So I go back. Let me see what else I can find. How's the weather? Well, that's a neat information. Actually, I could look outside the window because that's where I am. And the weather in three, meter, three kilometers distance shouldn't be that different. But it's nice to see that with slight winds, uh, tomorrow is going to be... Um, actually, it's going to be quite some fine weather, sunny, 20 degrees, 23 degrees in the afternoon, five day weather is included, very nice. And I could call them, I could save it to my favorites, which could also be nice. But you want to see navigation, so I switch on navigation. So let's say we drive there, and that it calculates the fastest route. Let's see, and there we go. And that shows me where to go, it shows me the distance, it shows me the time left, it shows me the arrival time. And again, it's recalculating because I'm not moving. So this is really, really neat, I have to say so. Um, pretty nice. Um, let's see what the options are. Um, and it's recalculating again. So, yeah. True navigation on a regular Sony Ericsson phone. You wouldn't have expected that, I guess. Ah, you can see, there's quite some settings. There's a difference between private car, a company car, walking, biking, running. <laughs> Let's see what the difference is. Um, so we can set up an average speed. That's what they told me. I had a speed of 1.89 uh, kilometers an hour, maximum speed of 14 kilometers an hour. I guess that's uh, probably uh, some information they made up because the GPS uh, signal wasn't that correct as I'm indoors. But yeah, so very, very cool. Thank you very much Sony Ericsson for implementing that in the phone, uh, especially with the regular operating system. I like it.